Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a recap of the GS9 experience. This took place on November 18th in the Wayland building in Brooklyn, New York, and I was fortunate enough to be part of this experience. The event started just a little bit past 11. You can see that people were waiting outside the doors. I was talking to the attendees while I was waiting in line, and there were people from all across the country and of course myself from Canada. And just a quick wrist check, I was wearing the Seiko Grand Quartz 4842-5100. Most of the attendees were wearing modern Grand Seikos, so I got a lot of compliments for my unique and vintage timepiece. Once we got inside the Wayland, there was tons of things for us to look at and try out. The first thing I want to point out is this table on the right hand side. This was a booth that was being hosted by the New York Horological Society. They were giving participants a chance to actually work on some Grand Seiko 9S movements. And unfortunately, I didn't shoot any video of the process, but I was able to take out and put back in the balance wheel of a 9S65 movement. Moving on with our tour of the event, you can see that this is actually Teddy Baldassar talking with some fans. I didn't even realize he got to the event that early. Unfortunately, the lighting of the event wasn't that great. It was quite dark most of the time, so it was hard to see who was who. But I was fortunate enough to have a chat with him after his panel event. We talked about tips on building your YouTube channel, and Teddy seems like an overall genuine and smart guy. So I'm glad that I was able to meet with him face to face. As we moved to the back of the room, there were tons of watches on display. The most notable one was the Constant Force Turbion SLGT001. Only one of these was produced, so you can imagine the price it's gonna fetch in the Philips auction in December. Even though none of us was able to handle the watch, I think it was really great that we were able to see the watch in person, because I don't think I'll be able to see this watch again once it's sold. Now while some watches were constrained to their display cases, they did have some watches to try out. There were some watches that I wanted to see in particular, and the first one was the Grand Seiko First. The first Grand Seiko was released back in 1960, and for the past two years, I've been looking to buy one from Yahoo Auctions Japan. Being able to hold one in real life and take pictures of it was really valuable, because it'll help me know what to look for when buying one online. Another watch I was able to try on was the SBGP-017, the Sea of Clouds. I was interested in this watch because it's a quartz watch with a display case back. And while the design of this watch is decent, it didn't wow me as much as I thought it would. So I don't think I'll be adding this watch to my collection in the near future. Now we move upstairs to the conference or the panel room where all the panel discussions were being held. I tried to find a good seat where I'd be able to film the panel speakers, but you'll see later on that I wasn't able to find a good spot. And just a small side note, there was a watchmaker who was demonstrating how to assemble a spring drive movement, and this gentleman is the main guy who repairs spring drive watches in North America, so if you do get your spring drive watch to be serviced, this is the guy who does it. And just a quick side note, Right before the first panel started, my Grand Quartz wrist strap actually broke off, so for the rest of the event, I unfortunately could not wear a watch. This is my own fault though, I knew that this leather strap was seeing the last of its days, but I thought that it would last at least one more day for this event. I'll be making a review of the Seiko Grand Quartz watch in the future, as soon as I find a leather strap for it. Now onto the main events, the first panel discussion was by Joe Kirk, who is the Grand Seiko brand curator, and he was talking about the Kodo Constant Force Turbion. Now Joe was joking throughout the presentation about how he hopes that we're not going to fall asleep during his presentation, but his speaking skills were great and I'm sure a lot of people in that room were sold on the idea of the Turbion and were ready to buy one themselves, if they had the money to. The next panel discussion was about how to create engaging watch content for modern enthusiasts, and they brought on Teddy Baldassar, Zach Pina, Bryn Walner, and Christian Zeron to lead the discussion. To be honest, I was only interested in what Teddy Baldassar had to say, but it was interesting to see how different people ended up in the watch community. The panel discussion after that was about the evolution of Grand Seiko, but I only attended that one for about 5 minutes, and the panel discussion after that one I just skipped completely. Instead, I spent my time on the showroom floor, trying on more watches, and also speaking with other watch enthusiasts. It was so great to be able to speak with people that had the same passions as me. I even ran into a fellow watch YouTuber who was live streaming at the time, so shout out to Tim Wright for letting me be on his stream. And then finally, we head back to the panel room for the big announcement. They announced the SBGY023, which is a limited edition spring drive only for GS9 members in the US. But that turned out to not be the end of the event. They opened up the back of the panel room to reveal what was essentially a giant dance club. There was a DJ, lights, smoke machines, and tons of Japanese food for dinner, which I really appreciated because I was starving at this point. Now in my opinion, I think the demographic that attended this event would have appreciated a jazz club more but I still think it was really cool that they ended off the event with a giant dance party. They also had display cases showing off the SBGY023 so you could look at it in person. Personally, I don't think I'm going to end up buying this watch, but let me know in the comments below what you think of this new model. 
I ended up staying at the after party for about an hour and a half to two hours or so, but eventually people started leaving and I was feeling pretty tired myself. So I headed home after being there for almost 10 hours. But I didn't leave the event empty handed. Every attendee got a tote bag with some Grand Seiko merchandise. And that includes a GS9 membership club card that's entirely made out of metal. And a watch travel pouch which will come in handy the next time I go to a watch summit. This is a print of the Matsumoto Castle at dusk in autumn which inspired the SBGY023. And finally, these are the first two issues of the GS9 Club magazine. It contains pictures and articles about Grand Seiko watches, so I'll have to read it when I get the chance. So in conclusion, I'm very pleased that Grand Seiko hosted this event. I can't think of another watch company that's so transparent on what it takes to become a member of their inner circle. And thankfully, the barrier to enter the GS9 Club is relatively small, and I had a great time looking at and trying on different watches, speaking with watch enthusiasts and executives and people within the watch community, and it's given me a great deal of respect for Grand Seiko. I already had respect for them before, but now I can see that they're really onto something here, and I'm really looking forward to attend the next event that they host. New York seems to have a tightly knit watch community, and there's plenty to do in the city if you're a fan of watches. For example, after the event, I went to the Grand Seiko boutique, and I also went to Watches of Switzerland, which is a Grand Seiko dealer. One of their salespeople let me try on some great watches while I was there, so thank you Chris for your hospitality at Watches of Switzerland. So that is it for the GS9 Experience 2022. I can't wait to see what's in store for 2023. Thank you all for watching, subscribe for more videos, and as always, I'll see you guys next time.